Hello developers. Today we're unlocking a powerful new update in CSS that's going to completely change how you think about styling with HTML attributes. We're talking about the ATTR function and how it went from being a simple tooltip helper to a full-blown dynamic styling tool. In this video, you'll learn what the ATTR function used to do and why it was so limited. How the latest CSS updates have made it powerful enough to control widths, sizes, colors, and more, all using just HTML. We'll build three real UI examples, a classic tooltip using old style ATTR, a dynamic layout that resizes based on data values, and a color changing badge system, all without a single line of JavaScript. By the end, you'll understand the new ATTR syntax, how to use types like number, rem, percent, or color, and how fallback values keep your layout safe and flexible. Let's see how small HTML changes can now control entire layouts, using nothing but modern CSS. Let's go back to a time when the CSS ATTR function was very limited. And, I mean, very limited. The only thing it could do was show text. Specifically, it would pull a text value from an attribute in the HTML and display it inside a pseudo element like before or after. That's all, nothing more. You couldn't use it for styling, you couldn't use it for calculations, you couldn't use it to control size, layout, or even colors. Just static text, one job, one tiny use case. And the most common example of this was tooltips. Let's say you have a button, you want to show a little message above it when the user hovers. What do you do? You add a custom attribute in HTML. Let's call it data tooltip. You write your message there. Something like this will save your progress. Then in CSS, you target the buttons after pseudo element and you say content equals ATTR of data tooltip and boom, the message appears when you hover. That's what ATTR did. It simply grabbed the string and printed it like a label. No dynamic layout, no numeric manipulation, just a plain visual message. It worked, but it was kind of like printing out a sticky note. You could read it, but you couldn't do anything with it. Now, of course, we tried to push it further using transitions, positioning, fancy hover states. But deep down, we always knew the logic was fixed. ATTR was just a content printer. That's how we built these tooltips before. It looked dynamic, but the core behavior was extremely limited. Now, fast forward to today. The CSS ATTR function has evolved. And it's not just a string printer anymore. It's now a real layout tool. You can use ATTR to control width, height, padding, background color, spacing, scaling, all based on values written inside your HTML and that opens up some very powerful use cases. Let me show you how. We're going to break down a modern example using the new ATTR features. No JavaScript required, just HTML and CSS. On the screen, we have two types of UI widgets. The first one is a horizontal progress bar. Each bar has a label, like upload progress or conversion progress. And inside the bar, there's a div that fills up based on progress. Now here's the twist. We're not controlling that width from CSS, we're controlling it from HTML. Each fill element has a data width attribute. For example, one has data width equal to 80, the other has data width equal to 40. So basically the number comes from the markup, not from a CSS rule. The second type of widget is a circular card. It's like a round badge showing a percentage. One says 64%, the other says 45%, and again, the size of these circles isn't hard-coded. Each one uses a data size attribute. One has five, another has 3.5. So how does this magic happen? Let's talk about the new ATTR syntax. Here's how it works. In plain English, you start with ATTR, open parentheses. Then you write the name of the attribute you want to use. Next, you specify the type. This tells the browser how to interpret the value. Then you choose the unit, like REM or percent. And finally, you provide a fallback in case the attribute is missing. Let's go step by step. The first part is the attribute name, for example, data width. That tells CSS which value to pull. Second is the type, 
This could be number percent, RAM, color, or even custom identifiers. This helps the browser know whether it's dealing with a dimension, a color, or just a word. Third is the fallback, a backup value if the HTML doesn't have the attribute. This keeps the layout safe and prevents things from breaking. Now let's apply this to our progress bar. The width of the inner bar is controlled by ATTR of data width, treated as a percent, with a fallback of 0%. So when the HTML says data width equals 80, the inner bar stretches to 80% of the parent width. Clean, simple, dynamic, no JavaScript, no conditional classes. Just one line in HTML and one line in CSS. Now look at the circle cards. Both the height and width are based on ATTR of data size, treated as REM, with a fallback of 6 REM. So when we give a circle data size equals 5, the browser makes it 5 REM tall and 5 REM wide. What's the benefit? You're now styling your layout using HTML. That makes components flexible, scalable, and easier to maintain. You can reuse the same class and just change the numbers. Want to make the circle bigger? Change 5 to 7. Want a half size version? Change 5 to 2.5. It's like passing props, but with no JavaScript at all. That's the beauty of the modern ATTR function. Now, let's step back and highlight what this means for real projects. One, we can now create reusable components that adapt visually just by changing HTML. No class clutter, no override wars, just clean attribute-driven styling. Two, fallbacks make everything safer. If someone forgets to add an attribute, the layout still holds together. And three, we can push creative boundaries. We're no longer restricted to static designs. We can make layouts feel alive just with markup and smart CSS. And this brings us to our next example. Let's use the ATTR function for something even more visual, dynamic color assignment. This is a great trick when you wanna theme elements like buttons, tags, badges, or status indicators. Here's what we did. We created four buttons. Each button has a data color attribute. One is green, one is red, one is blue, and one is left empty. So we can test what happens when no value is provided. Now in CSS, we define a custom variable called badge color, and we assign it using ATTR. We tell the browser, fetch data color from HTML, treat it as a color, and if it's missing, default to gray. Now we apply that badge color variable as the background color of the button. That's it. So what happens? The first three buttons use the exact color we gave them via HTML. The last one, with no color, falls back to gray. This is huge for scalability. Instead of creating badge red, badge green, badge blue classes, you now have one class and all the logic lives inside HTML. That makes your component code much smaller. It's also better for accessibility, documentation, and developer experience. Even designers can tweak values directly in the markup. No need to write new classes or worry about naming consistency. And most importantly, no JavaScript is required. No theme switchers. No DOM scripting. Just pure CSS with smart attribute-based logic. So to recap, the ATTR function used to be just a way to display text. Now it's a tool to build dynamic, responsive, data-driven layouts. You can control widths, heights, colors, spacings, all using simple HTML attributes. You can define types, apply fallbacks, and design smarter components without touching a single line of script. If this inspired you, please subscribe to the channel. It really motivates me to keep making these deep dives for the community. And if you want me to show more creative ATTR use cases, like animations, layout calculations, or utility-driven components, drop a comment below. See you in the next video.